All right. What's up? What's up? What's up? Instagram is telling people that I'm live. I'm in a shopping plaza. Amy, you're not working? You're supposed to be working right now. By the way, we're still, we are putting together the coaching program. So, um, it'll be out soon. Who else we have on there? It, let me tell you something. I promise you, this is uh, was hard to come on live. We're not going to do an hour tonight. Because I'm in a parking lot. I just finished eating dinner. So, I'm just coming on, saying hi to everyone. What's up, Tracy? I'm saying hi to all of my people. Seeing if anyone has anything pressing that they want to discuss, they want to go about. So, is that already blew my face? Ah, your day off. Okay. All right. Good stuff. So, yep, I just finished dinner. I, I just try to keep my obligations because I said 8 o'clock we're going to come on. So, I'm here. So, you guys tell me what you want to talk about. Tell me what you want to do. I'm here. I'm holding my word. I, I remember, actually, I went to go see, you know, Mama Oprah before COVID hit. And she talked about how even if she was sick, she would show up. She would go to her event, even if she didn't feel good. So even though I'm really tired, I had two meetings. I just left dinner, actually three meetings. Dinner, I'm still like, okay, let me, while I'm in a parking lot before I jump in the car, let me jump on and see if there's anyone that has anything. Maybe the government sent y'all something that we need to talk about. By the way, Tracy, were you on the call last night, the members call? It was a good one. We were actually going over. We went over um, the, what was it? Oh, Chris Facey. He had a proposal. He was doing, actually to the point where he's negotiating. So we went over that in last night's call. It was, it was, it was pretty, it was good shit. Oh, briefly. Okay. Uh, it's okay. I mean, you know all that stuff. So. All right. What, what, what's, what's going on? What do we have? What y'all need? Nothing. Everybody's good. All. Last, uh, this past week, we released a couple episodes did anyone see my man Patrick Heffler's? Patrick Heffler was is good. Lincoln Tyson's coming up. Marie Gill's coming up. Uh, yeah, where you? Look, your internet always be acting up. Mine, I was worried about mine because it was storming. Because, I, I don't know, but we were, I don't know if we were catching the tail end of that, that hurricane that was hit, hitting Pensacola, but... Uh, it was storming at my house yesterday, so I was concerned. Mr. Poplar said, can someone answer me? <laughs> Maria answered you. She told you. She gave us the website, govconedu.com. Govconedu, like education.com. Ah, uh, that's why. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I'm in a rural area myself. Here we go. Now someone's talking. Top five things you could do to land a government contract. All right. Top five things you could do to land a government contract. Uh, one is be prepared. There you go. Maria just put in the chat. Uh, so the question was, what are the top five things you could do to land a government contract? The first thing that I always tell people is be prepared. Uh, there's so many of us out here that are not prepared. And when I say that, um, it just means like they're not ready. You know, we. Uh... OK, I'll take a look at the message for your messenger. Did you send it today, Tracy? Because I didn't see it. I'll take a look. Um, so number one is be prepared. That is really key. Um, understand actual contracting. Um, 
or the, I would say understand the contract you're getting into um, because a lot of folks out there, okay, good. All right, I'll check it, Tracy, later. Uh, a lot of times what happens is I find, and I can tell you, I just left a meeting with some guys and um, they've been begging to meet me and literally since like July. And I was like, look, I ain't had time for you. So then I get to meet these guys, right? And um, they're like, oh, we want to do PPE. And I'm like, okay, I've heard that story before. Uh, but we're meeting, we're actually in a hospital, we're in a conference room. And so they're talking to me about this PPE stuff. And I said, okay, let me ask you something. If I called you tomorrow and I had an order for X number of units, could you provide it? Well, so a lot of times what happens is we're not prepared. Um, I've had other cases where people have won contracts. They didn't have the money. They didn't have the finance. They didn't have a credit. They didn't have anything to, to actually do the contract, but they won the contract. So, you know, for me, the first thing I would say is be prepared. Uh, the second thing I would say is, you know, learn the contract or understand the contract. And for all those that just join in now, someone asked, what are the five, five top things to do to win government contracts? So be prepared is number one. Uh, learn the contract. Again, um, just another story from today. Maria was coaching another student who was doing a contract, and we gave her the example of um, Maria had a contract with a government agency that they were trying to give us or give her. And the government agency wanted to put the contract as a service contract. All right? And because we were not the ones doing the work, right? So the guy, let's say someone gave you a price of $50,000 to do it. And then you charge the government 60000 so you're going to make $10,000. Well, if they put it as a service contract, <clears throat> you are liable to do 50% of the work. <clears throat> and so because Maria was up on game, she told the government agencies, like, look, you can't make this a service contract. You have to make it this type of contract. And so they did it. They changed the type of contract it was so that she could meet her percentage requirements and then allow us to be able to do that contract. So again, those are things that for a lot of folks who don't understand contracting, a lot of people who are new to this stuff, like you wouldn't be able to do that. You would not be able to tell the government like to change the, 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 the actual codes, the NAX code it was, for the contract, you won't even have that confidence in your stomach. We were like, Maria told him, no, you can't do it. Um, so the number two thing would be learn contracting. Uh, number three, which is really, really important, relationships. Relationships, 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 relationships. Uh, everything that we do, our team, uh, we've had earlier today, Randy, by the way, you guys, in case you don't know, Randy just picked up her contract today. Lalani won a contract today. Maria won a contract today. So let me teach you about relationships. This is number three thing because, again, we're talking about the five things to do government contracts. Uh, the number three thing is relationships. So let's piggy off to another story. Today, Randy won her first contract with the FAA. Randy, right, is working with an 8A company that the FAA asked for past performance. Guess where her, the, F, the person's past performance came from? Maria. So Maria gave that company the past performance that she needed in order to help win the FAA contract that they were awarded. So again, relationships, only because of the relationships was that able to happen. If Maria did not lend her past performance to this particular person, they could not have qualified for this contract and they wouldn't have the contract that they have today. Sorry, I had to clean my face. So uh, number three thing is relationships, relationships, relationships. Uh, actually, relationships should be like three, four, and five. I'll be honest with you. Like relationships is that important. Um, relationships should be like Three and four, I would say, is relationships. Going back to the story today, in the office with this guy, and like, 
dude, this guy is telling us uh, he's going through. Nice guy, very no nothing wrong. Nice guy. We met him in his office. Maria got introduced to him through someone from the SBA and said, "Hey, this guy does you know all this wonderful stuff, and he's you know he does aviation and helicopters, and he manages uh, he's managed thirteen different countries and thousands of people and blah 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 all this kind of stuff." So we're in the office and talking to the guy. Maria and I sitting down. We're listening, and then the guy you know. He goes through, walks us through this plan of all the stuff that he has and all these things that he's done. And we're like, okay, cool. So I told the guy, I said, hey, looks like to me, you check all the boxes, right? You understand proposal writing. You've got, uh, you understand estimating, you know, understand soul sourcing. You understand, like he understood all of this stuff on paper. So I said, I, I don't know how we can help you. And I told Maria and I looked at the guy and I said, hey, I guess, it's, you know, there's no reason for us to be here. He's like, wait, 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 wait. And I said, he said, well, um, you know, that's on paper. And he says, um, I can tell you my SWOT analysis. And for those who don't know, SWOT analysis is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So I told, you know, um, what I told Maria, the analogy I gave is, we're like a doctor. If you don't tell me where your pain is, where you're sick, where you're hurting, how can I help you? Right. And so he was just telling me all this good stuff about him, all this great stuff, his company, this, his company, that he's got this experience, this he's got this experience, that he's got these guys. So I said, well, you don't need me. And um, and he's like, no, 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 no. Actually, you know, I want a sole source contract. I want you know, he wants a sole source contract. And I looked at his capability statement and I said to him, I go, OK, um, what area do you want to focus on? He goes, no, I want to do all this stuff. And I go, I don't work that way. And I literally told the guy, I go, look, this is not the way I work. You know, for me, you have to pick an area and go after that area. And uh, so I start asking him questions. Say, hey, look, you're in the aviation space. You do, you know, you you, you service airplane. He, he actually literally services certain helicopters and certain airplanes. And I go, you service those planes. You do all the logistics. You, you know, you actually fix them. You get the parts. You supply new parts. I go, why not, you know, do that for like the DLA? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, you know, we could do that. And we talked to the DLA and they're interested in us doing that for them. He says, but that's the long approach. And he said, yeah, it's a, it's a long term play. And so he goes to Beta Sam and he pulls up something on Beta Sam and he tell, go, begins to proceed, says, I want to do that contract. So I'm looking at it, and he's like, yeah, but it's due in a couple weeks. And I'm like, dude, you're too late. Like, He's like, no, 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 I can do that contract. And I'm telling this guy, I said, listen, um, this contract that's on beta, Sam, that you're looking at, someone else has already had their eyes on it for six months, maybe even a year. They know the ins and the outs. They know the people involved. They know the pain points of the government. They're already ahead of you. And he's like, yeah, yeah, but that's what I want to do. And I said, look, this is not the way I operate. Um, and you know, I can't really help you in that regard. So I said, but you know, if you're interested in doing some of these other things, um, you know, we'll do it. And that, that's, so that goes back to the fourth thing, which is like, you know, you got to find a lane. Um, he, he said that his strategy was they want to bid 25 contracts a month or 50 contracts a month. They're trying to cast this wide net across and that's not an effective strategy. That's just – that's not an effective strategy. I, if you were to spend the same amount of time and effort going after one agency, one client, then you're going to be laser beam focused and that's going to allow you to develop that relationship, cultivate that relationship, have them know you for one thing. Have you know you for one thing and then when the time comes and there's opportunities available, they know who to call. Okay, so a lot of people are chasing this, what I call shiny objects. Uh, there's a term called shiny object syndrome where they're just chasing the next big shiny object, and, and that's the key. So, again, those are the things that I would talk about uh, would be my top five to, you know, landing government contracts. <laughs> my man D. Will said, you're a surgeon with this stiff man. Yeah, I'm trying to break his bones and crack him up. And then, honestly, he spent... 45 minutes talking about his business and about all the great things they do. And I'm like, okay, so then what's the problem? 
and not and you know so then finally when we start talking about what we've done um and how we do it then um then, you know then it came around to you know a, a game plan and a strategy and then he started asking us what was our fees and our rates but we could have skipped all that nonsense if it had not been for him trying to sell me like I was a government agency. I told him, bro, I'm not the government. There's no reason to lie to me because I'm not the government. I'm not giving you a contract. So for you to pretend like you have this whole huge infrastructure in place, you know, it's uh, it just was a waste of time. Let me go back and answer some of the questions I seen as I was talking through. By the way, Maria, uh, three and four were relationships. Finding Lane was number five. Relationships were that important. They get two. They get two into my top five. Relationships gets re- ranks three and fourth. Um, um, my man says we're trying to get cleaning and trucking contracts. How to get better at filling out? Um, there are cleaning contracts galore. Uh, that I mean, there's just there's so many cleaning contracts out here. Really, if it if it if I were in the cleaning contract space. Uh, I would get registered with my local state, I'd, my local municipality, and um, you know, you know, just price them, like just basically bid them. There's really nothing strategic about it in terms of cleaning contracts. They're everywhere. They're plentiful. I know people who are turning down cleaning contracts. Um, in fact, you know, someone in our group, she's they just they turn down cleaning contracts. There's too many for them to handle. Um, I have a student of mine that's here in the Miami-Dade Broward area that he's doing cleaning contracts for Miami-Dade County. They're they're plentiful. I, I really believe that if you are in the cleaning industry, you just literally have to get registered and start talking to people within uh, your local municipality or the municipalities around you and the local states. And they're they're looking for people really bad. They're desperate for cleaning contracts. I mean, everyone has to get their stuff clean. You know, the guys we met with today, they. Um, they are cleaning hotels and facilities. Like so, cleaning contracts to me are like really easy, really easy to get right now. They're almost like the PPE contracts that they were given out three months ago. All right. So again, let's. He's saying uh, my area is freight. My wife is clean. What suggestions on on that, that kind of field? Uh, we read it and it's kind of crazy. We'd like to know where to get more information. So I kind of just answered that question, which is like. You know, hey, um, register with your local, state, city, municipality. Get on some of the bidders list. Sign up for um, – I, I forgot the one we had, Bid Sync or um, Bid – some of those – Marie, do you know the ones that we have, the bid ones that we get every week? We bought – I bought one of those bidding services like Bid Sync or, or Bid something, and they send us a lot of like cleaning, PPE, whatever kind of stuff. We get that all the time. So for cleaning contracts – you shouldn't have a problem. I mean, honestly, I think all you have to do is literally show up and, and ask, and, and people will give you contracts. I, and I and I never say that about anything. But I, but I've seen it just in cleaning. I've seen the need is so great that they're they're begging people to come do this. Uh, once a set aside solicitation has passed, could you still provide RFQ to the contracting officer? Nope. If it's gone, it's gone. There you go. Bid sync. There you go. Maria answered it. Bid sync. Yeah, bid sync. So, yeah, bid sync is a place to do it. Um, can we help you? Yeah, we actually, Maria, Maria and I are working on the uh, coaching program where we're, we're, you know, we'll be helping people out, which is not quite finished yet, but uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. So. Hey, Nikki, what I did to Maria? She thought, leave Maria alone. What I did? That's messed up. I didn't do nothing to her. So, yeah, but we're working on we're working on um, trucking with us for life. Message us. In fact, message us here on GovCon Giants. Just DM us, and then we'll keep you in the loop when we have this thing wrapped up. We, we're we're working on it. I promise you. We're like. A lot of people are asking for this stuff. All right. I registered for Sam today. How long do I have to wait to get approved? I think the last time when we got registered, my my joint venture partner, it was uh, six weeks. 
Yeah, but just because your registration is not approved doesn't mean you can't start doing all the activities you need to put yourself in a position to land contracts. I would not wait for my Sam to start marketing my business. D, I'm ready for the coaching. Um, okay, my man says, how do you develop a calendar so you can forecast where to start building relationships? Um, I'm trying to understand that question. How do you develop a calendar so you can forecast where to start building relationships? Well, I think, uh, I don't know about this calendar that you're asking, but there's a couple places where you can learn it. Obviously, we, you know, we teach it. Uh, I don't know what the hell happened. Some noise happened in the background. Um, so where to start building relationships? We, we, we have some content publicly available on YouTube that talks about it. Also, um, I remember reading it in Judy Bratt's book. I can't think of the name of her book, but Judy Bratt, J-U-D-Y, B-R-A-D-T. Her book talks about the nine people that you want to know in government, do business with. Uh, you can find it on Amazon. She's got a place that talks about that. We talk about it on YouTube. We talk about it in the course. So, I mean, in terms of a calendar, uh, we don't really have a calendar for it, but we do have the people that you need to know and talk to that will take you from one you know, one step to the next step to the other. So uh, we do have that uh, available publicly, like everywhere. Uh, and again, I know because it comes to my mind, Judy Bratt has a section in her book that says these are the nine people that you need to talk to. Definitely. Um, can you, can someone look it up to see what, what's the name of her book? I can't remember it now, but it's really good. Um, so, yeah. No, I know I said start building relationships. Right. So your question is with whom, right? Um, I guess I just don't understand how does a calendar relate to that. That's just my point. But there's, there, again, I'm telling you, on, on YouTube, we talked about does the government buy what I sell? And um, in Judy's Brack, Judy Bratt's book, we talk about, it, or she talks about the nine people that you need to be there you go. Contracts made easier. The nine people that you need to know in the government contracting space. And I think that's kind of what you're asking. All right. So what should I be doing uh, until I get approved? Relationships, relationships, relationships. Um, until you get approved in SAM, I would – a couple things. One is, um, you know, going back to what Maria put on the screen, right? Maria, can you put those five things that we just talked about back on the screen, please? Um, so what I would do is these five activities that we just listed on here and learning contracting, right? Uh, making sure your team is together. Uh, how do you do that? Uh, look up some existing outstanding contracts for, in your particular arena. See if you have all of the qualifications, right? Make sure that you do. If you don't, find out who you need to bring on, partner, team member, whatever the case may be to help you offset where you're lacking so that then you have a strong team. Uh, if there's capabilities, make sure you acquire those capabilities in some shape, form, or fashion. Um, and then, then at that point, you can start reaching out to people. However, I will tell you this. This, because it's the end of the fiscal year, this is not the time to build relationships. Uh, unfortunately, everyone is super busy. They're trying to put out projects. That's why today we were awarded projects in Florida in California simultaneously because the government is just putting out projects. Uh, we have people on our team that work inside of the government and they're reviewing technical proposals every day, all week. That's just, that's, that's where everyone's focus is until the fiscal year ends. So this is not the best time to start trying to build relationships. I'd wait till October, but at the same time, you could do all the planning, right? So figure out who the people you should be talking to, uh, get their information, track it down, uh, pull down a list of the upcoming projects, the forecast for 2021, right? Because 2020 is gone. Now we're going to 2021. Pull down a list of the upcoming projects and opportunities and start seeing where you can position yourself, your company, uh, and align with some of those projects. And then that way, when the government comes back from hiatus, right, then you can start setting up meetings and talking to them. In fact, uh, if you go on my YouTube channel, 
I have a video. It's called What Activities Should You Be Doing in the Month of October? Right? So I put that out for 2019, but it's the same activities in 2020 because it's October again, and these are the activities that you should be doing. So I just, I actually just sent that to one of our interns who asked, well, what should, what should people do in October? I go, actually, I have a video called What to Do in the Month of October. So take a look at that video. It gives you all that information that you're asking for because, again, people have already done it. Oh, hold on. I got a request to join live. Let's see what we have. Oh, you watched it. Okay. No, no problem. Glad to help out. Okay. I'm waiting on my man JR to jump in. All right. So you said, I believe I could be wrong. Our issue is not understanding the pain point, selling our value proposition, and appropriate price. And we continue to miss the mark. Um, no, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate that. All the best. Okay. Hold on. Okay. I guess JR could get on. Um, you know, I think that the, the pricing could be your issue. We had one of my other students that he was going after opportunities and he didn't know how to price it correctly. At the time, we had someone that was a former contracting officer that worked with him to help them on the pricing. And he was able to basically restructure his pricing. And then he started winning contract, 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 contract. So you could be right. It could be um, the pricing. In terms of your value proposition, maybe. I'm not sure the industry you're in. So that's possible. Um, hold on. JR wants to jump on. Let me see. No, no, listen. I, I mean, this is, this is, oh, there he is. Yeah, finally. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, nah, you good? No, this is good. So, um, you know, everybody know what's going on right now, right? There's a big hurricane and there's the response and stuff like that. Well, I was looking at sources sought and um, I mean, FEMA already put out contracts related to Hurricane Sally and uh, right. It, it closes uh, tomorrow morning. So you only got 12 hours to find a bidder. Well, uh, basically, I don't know, Eric, you're in Tallahassee. That's well, you're near Tallahassee. You're near Florida. And that's the place of performance where they uh -huh. want to stage the gear before they do that. Uh, you know, long story short, I tried to contact, uh, you know, some people from her rentals and stuff using my, uh, you know, my methods, my research methods. Um, yeah, I'm just here to jump on and see if anybody is in uh, Florida. If you guys want to do this bid real fast, uh, we have to respond by tomorrow morning. Um, <laughs> and it, it literally came out less than an hour ago. So you Get guys want to do that. I'll drop my email in there. And this is uh, just from my estimates. Um, you know, it's just a source of thought. So they don't tell you everything specific. They don't really tell you the technical requirements because it's hurricane. They just said, hey, we want this piece of gear. We want this piece of gear. It already looks like it's at least $300,000. With just and what, is it, what are they looking for? What are they looking for? Uh, they're looking for they're looking for some pretty big generators. like Generators? Uh, at least, yeah, generators, pumps, hoses. So uh, pumps and hoses, you're looking at about 50 items. Uh, okay. As far as generators, you're looking at about 15. But these generators go all the way from 250 kilowatts to one of them that's all the way I up got a to, bucket uh, mine that does generators. Okay. Well, that's but I don't two know separate solutions. To time. But you just, again, I, I mean, he, uh, uh, Maria, John, put uh, connect, connect JR with John Bowen. Definitely. Okay. All right. Yeah. And they're two separate solicitations. So, uh, yeah, hey, he does generators. Yeah. He actually is providing generators down here in Miami-Dade County. Oh, perfect. Okay. Perfect. So, yeah. Here in Miami, uh, and he does, he actually does generators. So outstanding. Yeah. I, okay. I can, I'll connect you with John. All right. Thanks a lot for letting me, you know, talk to the group, Eric. Thanks. Nah, come on. Listen, th this is the stuff we need to happen. 
seriously, this is what people should be doing. So, all right. And so, as you see, my man Jr. Listen, I, I don't know when he started, but he came on and he's been like a firestorm. So he's been he came on. He's been consuming the content, bought the course, jumped in head first, helped his friends, told some of his friends about what we're doing out here. Uh, they landed some securities uh, contract. And so he's been like just cranked up. I know when people are going to be successful. Oh, three weeks ago. There you go. Three weeks ago. I know when people are going to be successful. And, and you know, when you see people that are doing activities, that are following what we talk about, this is how you get yourself in a position. Like you said, he's looking at stuff that's just coming out now about a hurricane that's hitting as we are speaking. Solve a problem. Solve a need. That's what I was trying to tell these guys today in the meeting. I'm like, dude. I, I don't do how you guys operate business. I, I'm following GAO reports, right? Most people don't even know what a GAO report is. I'm sure Demetrius knows what a GAO report is. JR probably knows what a GAO report is, right? GAO report, I tweet about this. If you go to my Twitter feed, you'll see I'm tweeting GAO reports. Like, what the hell? GAO, Government Accountability Office. Why am I looking at that? Because the Government Accountability Office is dinging agencies. They're dinging the federal agencies for not doing X, Y, Z. They're telling where there's shortfalls. They're telling them where there's problem areas at. And that's where you want to go and solve those problems and offer them up solutions. He's talking about a hurricane that's happening right now. That's solving a problem that they need a solution for because the, the hurricane's happening. So they need people to work on this Today, they don't need you to talk about doing hurricane relief six months from now. The hurricane is happening today. That place needs to be cleaned up. This week, if you are living in Pensacola, the only thing you're thinking about is when is somebody coming to cut down these trees, fix up these power lines, clean up this debris, clean up this trash. That's the only thing that's on your mind. Not JR. JR is saying, hold up. They got a hurricane coming. Hmm. I smell an opportunity. Okay. I see. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Right? Not sitting here saying, well, I'm going to wait until the government puts out an RFP because I have 10 dump trucks. And all you people out here that do freight, logistics, you just asked about how do I get more trucking contracts? Are you looking at what JR just said? Are you looking at Source of Sot? You know why he knows Source of Sot? Because we talk about it. I preach. RFIs, source of thoughts, get ahead of the game. Get ahead. Don't wait until it comes out. Maria's contract that she just won today never made it to Beta Sam. It was a source of thought notice. She responded. They emailed her the opportunity directly. She negotiated. She got a word today. So that's, that's how you get ahead of it, right? So if you're still watching, my man who asked me about the five things to do, that's he said, he, he said he even used one of the templates. It works. <laughs> Look, I tell people, use my words, use my templates, use every, like, don't even change it. They don't know it's me. They don't even know me. Like, just use the stuff. I don't care. I, it, that's why it's here. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. So, look, let's go back to what Maria just put on screen. Going back to what we talked about, be prepared no contracting, relationships, relationships, and then find your lane. And that's what he's doing. He's, you know, again, be prepared, right? Because I'm sure if you respond to that for Hurricane Sally, they're going to call you. They need generators. They're going to call you, right? Uh, I'm sure, M Maria, where's our boy Brocco Oil at? Where's Brocco Oil? Louisiana, right now, where there's fires. He's out there. They're filling up generators. So, Again, uh, for everyone that's listening who's new, I, you know, follow these things. I, 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 it was a great question that someone asked, the five things to do. And uh, so, you know, be prepared, no contracting, relationships, relationships, and find your lane. So, hey, look, with that said, I'm going to sign off because I'm on here a lot longer than I thought. I'm sweating. I had some ramen, and it was a little bit spicy. So, um, JR, we will connect with you. We'll definitely put you in contact with my man, John Bowen. Um, send us over the source of thought so we can look at it. That way, in case we have somebody else that comes to mind, uh, I'll, you know, just send them your way as well. All right. 
Maria, drop it in the chat for man. Um, WK Randall one. GovConEDU.com. GovConEDU.com. So it's G-O-V-C-O-N-E-D-U.com. That's where it is. All right. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Monday, this Monday on YouTube Live, 6 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be talking about uh, building. Matter of fact, JR, hold on. This Monday, we're doing uh, building business credit, and John Bowen, the guy I'm talking about, is going to be co hosting that with me. So he does business credit, and that's how he was able to start doing all of these. Uh, contracts with the, the Miami Dade County. So, in fact, he's going to be doing that with me this upcoming Monday. So, all right, guys, listen, be safe out there. Love you guys. Stay healthy, wear a mask, and vote.